Alright, this is the next question. It says, um, does wealth ruin the martial artist? Do you think wealth runs the martial artist? I ask this question because I've noticed that money is always at the forefront of people's minds, not always. When Conor McGregor first came on the scene, people were impressed by his movement and the way he performed as a martial artist. Now his martial art ability seems to have taken a back seat to his wealth and with his wealth, his attitude and brashness has worsened. Floyd Mayweather is as incredible as he is. More people focus on his wealth and personal life than his boxing ability. It's nice to make money and be comfortable in life. However, I feel that that's being pushed too much in the media and by the fighters themselves. On the flip side, you have Jet Li, Jackie Chan, Donnie Yen, Tony Jao, all of which I'm sure are very wealthy, yet they conduct themselves with respect and dignity and have been known to help the less fortunate with their wealth with no little, no to little acknowledgement. This got me to think about my main inspiration in martial arts, Bruce Lee. Once he made Enter the Dragon, he became the wealthiest he had ever been. Only unfortunately, he passed away before experiencing the high life and all the things that come with it. If Bruce Lee would have survived into today's way of life, do you think he would have stayed true to himself? Or do you think he would have strayed to where the money was? The same goes, the love of money is the root of all evil. I like to think Bruce Lee would have stayed true to himself and carried on to represent martial arts in the correct way. What do you think? You know, this goes back to when I made the video about never being able to ever be better than Bruce Lee. Is I think Bruce Lee should be used as a guiding force towards the betterment of yourself and essentially to be the best person that you possibly can be through his inspiration so um, to use him as a guiding force so would he have given in would he have lived up to the true principles now I think it's good to think that he would have so then you could strive to be that but if you just assume that he would have been just another Conor McGregor or just another, you know, sellout, then that's really nothing to live up to, you know. And I think we could use other people as an example who are living or who have lived or who have become successful, who have, um, you know, transcended the mold, you know and gone beyond the mold and you know certain people that will live up to certain principles and certain truths that are just not gonna be have money as their god and that's the problem you know that's the saying with the, the bible or with jesus is the love the love of money is the root of all evil so don't fall in love with the money even though a majority of the people do um, the people that live up to the higher principles will live a life where that is not the case, you know, and, you know, there's certain artists out there that have lived or that are living that may uh, represent that, you know, so maybe as an example, like he said, you know, Jet Li, you know, I don't know too much about their personal life, but maybe Jet Li, maybe Jackie Chan, maybe Donnie Yen. Maybe Denzel Washington, because let's not limit it to martial arts. It's not just martial artists that, you know, give into the money and just become corrupted. It's just human beings, you know, just a woman, like a beautiful woman. She could give into the money and just be a stripper or be a prostitute, or she could not refrain from doing that and live a life of higher value that's not going to be just selling her body for money, selling her soul for money, you know. Um, Dave Chappelle would be another example. You know, at the height of his fame, they, they enticed him with more money. I think, I forgot how much, I think it might have been like $55 million to, to have him do another season. But it just went against his values. And he's like, no, I can't do this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get out. So he's an example. Buddha was another example. The, the, the most extreme example. Being a prince being ready to be the next king where he just has everything and he just dropped it all to just basically head towards the truth and represent truth, live the truth, teach the truth and then he just lived on the streets 
as a beggar and an educator for his entire life for 40 years and this is all he did. And there are people out there that are not in love with money, that are not controlled by money. They know, they have a balance. They know when to put a limit on it. And there's people out there like that. And I think Bruce Lee would have lived up to that those principles. Because while he was living, you know, they tried to tell him, hey, you know, why don't you go ahead and lose this fight to Robin? He's like, no, that's no way. I'm the real martial artist. He didn't even practice martial arts. Why would I lose to him? You know, so he fought for that. He fought to, to, to basically get them to agree to just have a draw. And that's what they did. He also made the statement that, hey, you know, I'll never participate in any movies where they're disrespecting the Chinese and poking fun at the Chinese and degrading the Chinese. I'm not going to take part in that. And he lived up to those principles. And that's what a martial artist would do, you know. He's not just going to do whatever for money. You know, and... Um, people are in love with money. And that's why Mayweather is the way that he is. You know, and people love money. You know, and Mayweather is multi-million dollar man and probably the richest athlete in the world and people pay him a bunch of money compared to Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee was, is nothing compared to Mayweather as far as money is concerned. So Mayweather knows how to play the audience to generate the most sales to make the most money. And uh, Pacquiao might be um, more of a humble person. Pacquiao might be somebody that is not as greedy, you know, or not as in love with money, but he still boxes for money. And then they say that he would, you know, the money that he makes from the boxing, he'd give back to the poor communities and things like that. But, you know, It's, 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 it's business, it's marketing, it's selling, you know, and it corrupts a lot of people. And you don't know how it's going to affect somebody until they actually go through it. You know, everybody that's poor could very easily say, oh, you know, that's a sellout. You know, he's such a douchebag or asshole and, you know, he... You know, he doesn't deserve to be where he's at. But then the people that are, the very people that are saying this themselves would do the same, end up doing the same exact thing when they get put in that same position, if not worse. You know, and I mean, just notice it within peop everyday lives with people, you know, like who. Who are the people that are truly giving? Who are the people that are truly loving? Who are the people that are truly compassionate? Who live humble lives? You know, like somebody like, I've heard, you know, I haven't really fact checked this, but I've heard that like Bill Gates still drives like a regular Camry. Like no, not, no extravagant, extravagant luxury cars, just a regular Camry. You know he's like the richest person in the world. Like, there's certain people out there that don't flaunt their wealth. They don't care to. And even if they're super rich, they still live very modest lives. And I heard, I think Warren, Warren Buffett, I heard something similar to him where he just lives a very simple life even though he's a multi-millionaire. Um, you see it in how the people re react, you know, how they flaunt their money or how they treat other people you know when they're in power or when they're rich how do they speak to other people how do they speak to waiters and waitresses and clerks and service people and how they treat other people you know and how they use their money you know they do they only use it for themselves or are they sharing money with other people and giving other people opportunities to to get rich and to make money like 
how are they using this money you know to the benefit you know to the, of the community you know and there are good people out there there are rich and it doesn't mean that everybody that that becomes rich is going to be corrupted you know um, so you know i guess it's just important to choose your role models wisely you know like what just because this person's skillful in what he does doesn't mean he's a good role model you know um, you know we gotta we gotta follow people that are truly wise and you know a lot of people love Jesus you know like there's so many followers of Jesus and he wasn't like that he wasn't you know greedy person that was in love with the money and so many people love Buddha and so many there are so many followers of Buddha you know and even Bruce Lee was one of them Osho was one of them I'm one of them and he wasn't all about the money Osho was a great great sage so is Lao Tzu and those are all people worth following that I like to follow and learn from and they're not all about the money you know and I don't feel that Bruce Lee was all about the money you know because the way that he built himself up and the way that he left it showed that he wasn't because he worked really hard and he didn't really have much and he opened up his own schools and it wasn't going the way that he wanted he shut them down he didn't just keep letting the schools go run just to make money he shut them down went into acting and wasn't even making that much money and he was just constantly working hard and trying to represent be the real him authentic and the way that he would talk the way that he would teach the, the movies that the way that he would make the movies all represented something beyond just greed he wasn't just doing it for the money he was doing it for something much more than just the money it shows through his work his writings and his movies it shows he wanted to sh he wanted to bring respect to the Chinese people he wanted to share the Chinese culture he wanted to share his beautiful art you know and he wanted to share express truth and then he passes away and then he doesn't even get to enjoy the money everybody that ends up getting the rights to his work ended up enjoying the money all the people connected to him ended up enjoying the money you know Danny Sano makes makes a lot more money than Bruce Lee ever made teaching Jeet Kune Do the concepts when Bruce Lee's the one who created Jeet Kune Do and even uh, Danny Sano's disciple Paul Vunet probably is making it more money than Bruce ever made and he he didn't create Jeet Kune Do he's just sharing some of the concepts of Jeet Kune Do like everybody's profiting off of Bruce Lee's name his fame his work everybody's making money from him but he pretty much never really had a chance to even enjoy the money that he made he was just working so hard and he pretty much worked himself to death you know he just made those movies so fast he was working on game of death working on end of the dragon barely getting any sleep wasn't even eating and he's just overworking himself until he just died he was just excited to just be able to reach out to the people and be you know the center of attention and to be premiered in a Hollywood video he was excited about that it wasn't even about the money it was about basically striving to to be known to to, to educate people what he was striving for was fame you know when he was little he was saying hey you know I'm gonna have I'm gonna be a household name everybody knows coca-cola everybody's gonna know Bruce Lee and funny enough that's exactly what happened he didn't say oh you know I'm gonna be the richest person in the world no he said I'm gonna be one of the most famous people to live he wanted to be well known and he achieved his goal but he wasn't all about the money but it's not that he just wanted to be well known he wanted to be well known so he could educate the people you know, through his work.
you know so there are good people out there that that are not just all about the money but they're much more than just that Martin Luther King Jr. was one of them Tupac was one of them Malcolm X was one of them Socrates clearly was one of them you know Bruce Lee Osho Lao Tzu you know Buddha you know there's there are people out there that are doing good work and helping people and it's not just all about the money but at the same time money is important for their work because the money is what helps circulate their work the more money that they make the more that they could potentially reach out to people and educate people help people you know like enlighten people awaken people just basically learning how to manage your money properly so then it could benefit the world you know money is not an evil thing is you know is is something that be, that could be used for the greater good you know um, it takes intelligence it takes spirituality so as you you know as you mature I think you'll learn to appreciate people that you know that it's just You know, and you know, appreciate certain artists and certain people and look beyond just their physical abilities and that's it, you know. Um, start to value people's intelligence and their spirituality, not just focus on the physical so much. You know. Oh just oh just because you know, look at Mike Tyson, Mayweather and whatever fighter. It's like what have they done for this world? You know, other than be a fleeting moment of entertainment. But great people transform people through their work. They don't just entertain people, they transform people. So, somebody like a Martin Luther King Jr., somebody like a Malcolm X, somebody like a Tupac, somebody like a Bruce Lee, somebody like a Jesus, Great people transform people through their work. It's like they, they get you to see something that you've never seen before. They get you... You know, to... Discover truths within you that you never would have realized if you haven't come across their work. So, only great people can be great artists. There's a lot of entertainers out there. There's a lot of rich people out there. There's a lot of people out there that will help you from not being bored for the moment. But those are not the great people. The great people are not just there to prevent you from getting bored. They're there to educate you. They're there to wake you up. They're there to help you become conscious, to find inner peace. To live a good life. You know. So. You know. That's that's what I had to say about that. You know. And if you can't find any great people. To serve as role models for yourself. Then become one yourself. Become the great person yourself. And that's what I'm saying. Is to use Bruce Lee. As a motivation to become the best that you could be so just assume that he would be representing the best of the best not just in combat not just in fitness but also in spirituality so then you could continue to strive to be a better you opposed to just assuming oh you know Bruce Lee if he was still alive he'd be fat and lazy and he'd just be all greedy all about the money and he he, you know, he wouldn't be able to fight anymore. He'd just be out of shape and, you know, he'd just be drinking beer all day and be a womanizer and, 
you know, child molester. I mean, you could think as much negativity as you want about him, but that's not going to help you become a better person. But if you think the best of him, but you know what, if he was still living, you know, he, he would still be in tip-top shape for his age. You know, he'd still be, like, super fast and still be great at sparring, and he'd be such a wise person, and he would help people and, and get other martial artists opportunities to be well known and, you know, pave the way for real artists, real people. Think good of him. So then, as you develop in your journey, you will strive to be good as well. And that's what I meant by saying that, you know, that I will never be better than Bruce Lee because I don't want to be. I want him to represent the best of the best so I can continue to strive to be better than what I am. And I can always be better. You know, less greedy, more giving. You know, less angry, more loving. You know, less lazy, more active. You know, just be better at what I do. Be a better person. You know, so that's what I gotta say.